everyone welcome to the third edition of the guru mantra podcast and here is your guru charan kumar today we have a special student guest speaker van shadow who scored 7 point in all the ib subject yes you heard it correct and got a perfect score 45 out of 45 and he also got a in tok and excellent essay listeners a little introduction about van shadow who graduated from the year 2022 in the realm of academic excellence few achievements shine as brightly as securing a perfect score in ib program that is bunch among the elite group of students who have accomplished this feat only few students have achieved this feat and one of the students is bunch shadow who has not only achieved a maximum 45 point but also demonstrate an unwavering commitment to holistic learning leadership and community service this score is a testament to the bunch dedication resilience and passion for the knowledge as we delve deeper into bunch journey it became evident that this achievement is not just about the numbers but a reflection of the young scholar pursuit of excellence in every endeavor bunch welcome to the guru mantra podcast and please introduce yourself to our audience thank you thank you guru sir it's a pleasure to be here uh, so yeah i'm that sir has already introduced i'm i'm bunch i i got a perfect score in the ib uh, i in my my free time i like to play the guitar i like to read and big fan of the sciences so i like to do math in my free time so yeah the, fantastic we will uh, go into the yeah. question listeners please note a small fact about it this year 2023 there were only 180 student achieved their perfect score 45 out of 45 and the bunch is among the 180 student once first we will go into the some aspect exploring the to can you share an example of a tok object that you personally connected with your based on your own experience how did this particular personal connection influence your understanding of object and the relevance to tok uh, yeah i definitely have uh, so my third object is a is a, is a, is a pretty funny object uh, because uh, i actually got it while talking to my tok supervisor it was completely random so my third third object was initially was a pretty mediocre object but then i was getting feedback from my tok uh, uh, advisor supervisor and he offered me some dry fruits i, I think in particular it was dates and um, sir i I'd, i've never actually tried dates before so uh, my, my teacher mr shida shridam he asked me if i have any allergies or anything to them because obviously it's pretty odd for someone to not try a date and they're like what 17 years old 17 years old at the time and then i said and i said yes yeah, sir I, i don't have any allergies and then that got me thinking though uh, i don't have any do i i don't have any allergies that's cuz i i haven't tried uh, i haven't I, it's it, that claim wasn't really substantiated properly because i'm not i i can't i can't know um, i can't make a factual statement like that without having tried every single food or every single uh, fruit in the world and yeah that was a that got that, that got my gears turning and that that made me think that yeah personal experiences can uh, are very important and personal experiences have a limit so if you're if you're basing any sort of claim of a personal experience that is inherently going to have a limitation because personal experiences are limited if, uh, my claim is is basically hogwash because it's, anyone's claim from personal experience is hogwash because they can't it's impossible to try everything so yeah that that was a pretty excellent when i wrote it out i mean obviously that was like what a year ago so i don't remember the full specifics of my object uh but yeah that was an excellent tok uh, really uh, object and i think that helped that helped me get an a in my exhibition fantastic one okay when uh, working on your tok exhibition how did you approach the process of identifying the most suitable object according to your given prompt can you describe a specific instance where your choice of object significantly impact your score yeah i mean an object one it has to obviously be relevant to your given prompt but more, more importantly it needs to make an an actual effect, uh, effective argument because if you're taking an object uh, you, you don't just want to be talking about it without any like particular aim you need to it will basically all things be okay you need to keep it somewhere in your mind that you're trying to make an argument you're trying to convince your tok okay exam okay is philosophy philosophy is based of logic the logic has certain axioms and postulates and you want your argument to follow a certain structure and that object has to be relevant and it has to be the center piece 
of your of your argument your argument has to evolve around it otherwise i mean what's the point of the tuk exhibition to begin with uh, so yeah that that's all i'd recommend for uh, identifying a suitable object uh, there is a bunch of other guidelines uh, i think the tuk what, what your object should be uh, i mean obviously it's been a year for me so i don't remember most of them uh, but yeah as long as you have satisfied those and you're actually cognizant of the fact that your uh, object has to help make an argument uh, your your set and uh, my choice of object we have already mentioned in the previous answer that one object with dates and fruits that uh, changed my uh, exhibition from being something that was mediocre to something that was high achieving yeah brilliant personal experience now once you will go a little bit about the tok essay in your experience how did incorporating a well written counter claim enhance the quality of your tok essay as you got a tok essay a grade can you share a specific example where the counter claim added a depth to your argument and to contribute to achieving a a a new tok uh, right so i mean the these days uh, in the, especially in the new tok syllabus like the counter claim isn't really emphasized but i still think it's very important my personally included a few counter claims Uh, I think mine was on the Bertrand Russell title. What was the degree that is the something that subtle knowledge can give us so power? And my my entire essay was kind of like uh, just picking apart the assumptions, the main assumptions that little little knowledge provides so much power and can provide so much power in the first place. So uh, my counterclaim was basically I, I went along with the assumption in in my in title four for the for last year, and then towards the end I started picking apart at the assumption itself. I started saying that. Uh, all this argument that made that's great and all but uh, it doesn't hold if this assumption doesn't even hold true and i i, I dedicated a, a, parag- a paragraph or two to just like analyzing that part of my title uh, and yeah that counter claim really added i feel like it adds de- depth to your argument now because uh, look tok uh, emphasizes you to be a critical thinker uh, it builds you to it builds critical thinking skills and if you are incapable of at least at the very least uh, being aware of possible counter claims and you can address them in your okay as if you want um, but d- doing so shows that yeah you you're thinking critically you're aware of the limitations of your argument no argument is perfect and they all have limitations and if you're aware of that and you make sure that's in your essay it goes very very far in making a convincing argument well which said. again is this essence of tok yeah well said much much uh, why do you believe the structure of the tok essay is crucial to get a a How did you go about the structuring your own TOK essay to effectively present your ideas and arguments? And if you take like a if you if if you, if you if you're if you're in debating or if you've taken a logic course a course on logic, you know that all arguments have structures, and there's a reason why arguments have structures because you start with premises, then you start reasoning and everything, uh, and unless you argument follows such, such a structure you're not in this you're trying to make an argument you're trying to convince your examiner and if you're going to get a g- good grade you're not going to be convincing anyone because if you have a certain point here and a certain point there and there's no continuity you're not building upon your previous argument you're not building up previous points and you're not connecting all that together to the title it's it's not really a tok essay then and uh, for my structure i mean i kept it simple introduction then uh, well uh, yeah i i had to use two uh, areas of knowledge so the first was the natural sciences and the other one was the social the um, social sciences so i started so introduction a few paragraphs on the natural sciences and my examples and then connect back to the title and then naturally oh yeah another part of essays it has to be very natural it has to flow it can't be very mechanized or mechanical because that's not how humans talk and again you're convincing someone you're not just vomiting out information it needs to flow and so from the natural sciences then very naturally flow into the social sciences and then your conclusion has to be a banger it has to it has to take everything you've said and it has to summarize it and help the whoever's reading your essay suddenly understand the big picture of everything you're saying and yeah so yeah structure very important of this brilliant okay not vomiting the information that's a key point once now tell me throughout your tok journey what are two common mistake you observed other students making and how did you ensure you avoided this pitfall to succeed in your tok journey to get a a the time so one tok introduces a lot of new vocabulary lots of new idea like there are different so many key concepts there's there's a lot to keep track of when you're initially getting to grips with tok now that's all great i personally think that's great it's very important 
to um, understand all these concepts and they're all given but uh, in many tio cases with my friends and even in the beginning i was again like i've already mentioned i was vomiting out those key concepts i was trying to put them in places they weren't supposed to be and that's not the point of the okay it ha- again it has to it has to ebb and it has to flow uh, so that that make sure again your argument has to be human just because it's the okay it doesn't mean it's it's a different kind of essay just like any other essay uh, so keep keep that in mind and uh, uh, another common mistake i mean i'm thinking uh, yeah Uh, uh, unfocused arguments it's very easy to go wildly out of scope in tok it's very easy to start uh, start chasing some other rabbit hole uh, get stuck in the rabbit hole of some other argument so you again need to stay focused because those uh, those few thousand words you have they're not much and once you start write, write uh, you need to be very very uh, it's 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 uh, those word that a word count is like prime real estate you can't be filling it with nonsense so yeah really that's true Mistakes, so sir. once you tell me as someone who achieve a a grade in tok what are the two valuable tips you can offer to fellow dp students aiming to achieve a same level of success like you a in tok two valuable tips they have to follow right so um, personally i just think number one pay attention in class if you uh, tok is a sort of subset where if you don't pay attention in class for two one or two classes you'll be lost for the rest of the year so don't don't uh, pay attention in class man uh, and second well uh, question everything i get tok is about, uh, about asking questions is about critical thinking and the moment you get uh, complacent and just accept an answer at face value that's where you're doing a big big disservice to tok this that's not not what it's about yeah that's a valuable now okay. once we are moving into the some question related to the exchange before we go for the question can you introduce your audience what is exchange the subject a little bit about your topic and research question Uh, right so the excellent essay is essentially a research paper in iv you choose it from any subject uh, and yeah you write the aim is to write a highly academic piece of work that aims to answer a certain research question now i did it in the in the natural sciences the hard sciences uh, particularly physics so this research uh, this is a, like a it's a sort of research paper that is more strict in the way you approach it but yeah there's still there's still degrees of freedom so uh, my uh, ee was on uh, classical mechanics uh, so i was investigating now this is like uh, i'll get technical here but there is a phenomenon known as the looping pendulum it's when you uh, you you ra- you basically wrap two heavy masses you take two heavy masses you connect them by a string uh, you pull up one of the masses and you release the other at a certain angle to the horizontal and the observed motion we see is that it loops around the rod and it wraps around the rod and found it out by completely by chance i saw i just saw this happen one day this is the ideal ee scenario that you see some a natural phenomenon and my initial ee topics uh, were very uh, i'd seen them online and stuff but the kinematic properties of that motion or change the ratio of the masses on that pendulum and invest uh, cha- saw how it changes the angular velocity or the looping angle. but you know, once now we are going to explain some questions related to extended essay can you tell the subject and research question about your extended essay right so i did my, my extended essay in physics and uh, i investigated this this system known as the looping pendulum you just take Uh, yeah it's a very technical i won't go into that uh, but i basically investigated how changing the ratio of masses of a string passed over uh, two masses connected by string passing over a rod and releasing uh, you release one of the, the lighter mass to the horizontal and you see that it loops so i investigated how changing the ratio of masses affects the angular velocity at which it loops uh, yeah that was my physics rq excellent okay that's the reason why you got a next now tell me once while working on your e what were some of the most challenging moments you face and how did you overcome them ultimately to excel in your research all right so i think the primary challenge was that my first this was this is my second rq i didn't get it right the first time the first time i decided to do a physics ee in, in something related to fluid mechanics and now um, you might not know what fluid mechanics is but it's a very very complicated uh, sub discipline of physics and in fact the ee guide actually warns in a, the physics ee guide warns against doing an essay related to fluid mechanics but i still did i i still did because i thought ah, i'm invincible like and i spent months and months chasing a dead end because fluid mechanics has very very difficult math very very difficult to test and eventually i realized i, I had to suck it up and i had to say na i won't be able to do a fluid mechanics based ee and i switched my topic and that was the be- best decision i've ever made so 
and i was obviously always fearful of switching because uh, i thought what will people say uh, i've lost so much progress but i made it up so i could, uh, yeah that was one the most challenging part of my e- and it did help me over over uh, excel because unless i had switched to something that i uh, was actually feasible i would have chased a dead end and i don't know where my e would have gone yeah okay. that's the primary challenge once can you tell how did you go about familiarizing yourself with a criteria for excellence so to ensure you met the requirements for achieving a grade were there any specific strategy or resources that proved for you helpful right uh, number one the ee rubric it's there for a reason if you read it thoroughly you self assess your ee whenever you do something you self assess as is just meeting the is just meeting the rubric that will do wonders for ee most ee students don't even open the rubric and if you do it i think you're already ahead of the pack by a significant amount and you self assess with that rubric you're golden uh, also your teachers your ee supervisor they have a very very good understanding of the rubric and they give you feedback based on that so make full use of your feedback uh I uh, take as many feedbacks as you can I mean there's obviously an official limit take as as much feedback as you can uh yeah so uh th- that's or, or if you familiarize yourself with the uh, rubric and take full use of your uh, feedback you're good yes that is a true one during your extend essay journey bunch how did you actively develop and apply critical thinking skills both within the context of your research and in other aspect of life using the extended essay uh, right so in the thing about the ee is uh, half the time your rq is something that is very niche something that most people if you're lucky most people have never done anything related to it uh, and you need to build upon existing information out there and that's where the critical thinking comes in because for your ia you might have had a very uh, simple topic which has been done uh, many many times by someone else and you just look it up you you get gain some inspiration but you still have a guideline with the e you're on your own and that if you're if you're able to take in all this information from all these sources and morph it together into your own e uh, that takes a lot of critical thinking skills because again you, you you're off you you're you're on your own you're doing this all yourself you're especially in physics you're developing a mathematical model by yourself you won't find this mathematical model anywhere else hopefully or maybe this is a this is a very uh, uh new application of that mathematical model so that that obviously develops a lot of critical thinking skills uh, also again when it comes to your rq when it comes to your approach to your research uh and ma- managing time that also takes a lot of critical thinking skills i mean obviously it's more self management but you need to critically evaluate am i putting enough time into my ee where do i want my ee to be uh, if i want my ee to be here how much effort do i need to put in uh, how often do i need to work on it that also takes critical thinking um so yeah two words once now tell me in your opinion what are two common mistake that students tend to make while undertaking the extend essay project what advice would you give to avoid this kind of the missteps so i can only think of it uh, i but i'm only i uh, feel qualified to speak on a physics or science ee uh, number 1 uh, this is they for their ee they make it for, stick to a very specific structure especially like one you see in the ia that's not what you're supposed i don't think that's what you're supposed to do in a, in an ee because again you're you're on your own you don't have to stick to that format this is not a test of the ie is a test of your uh, ability uh, your lab work ability the ee is you doing actual research so functionally your ie and your ee cannot be the same thing they kind of the same structure because it is an as straight forward and it, that you can see that you should be able to see that in your, in your structure you put putting so much a uh, focus on theory and the mathematical model and you're more rigorous with your uh, experimental techniques and uh, uh, sometimes you might not even have a mathematical model but it, there's a, there's a, there's so many things you can throw into the mix that make your ee different and i mean in a way more spicy than your uh, ia so the uh, biggest mistake i've seen they follow a very very specific structure one reminiscent of an ia and that does not fetch you good marks because it doesn't show personal engagement which is very important yeah. uh, and it doesn't uh, satisfy a bunch of other criteria in the rubric and well criteria you'd expect out of any research paper and uh, number 2 is uh, pursuing a very very i've already mentioned pursuing a very very uh, difficult ee topic it's good to uh, show initiative it's good to uh, be uh, daring but you need to be real as well you need to be realistic this is a piece of coursework that will affect your grade so be realistic about it. yeah
Well said. Uh, so, as a last question for extend essay, can you tell as someone who attend a A grade extend essay, what are two practical tips you can share with a DP one and two students who want to achieve a A grade in the extend essay like you? Okay, so number one is very simple. Just work on your E regularly. Start early. Work on it like once or twice a week. Before you know it, your E is done. Great. Uh, number two, this is more relevant to like physics, math, E is. Um, uh, Presentation is very important in the E. There's a bunch of there's a there's a good amount of points that are dedicated to presentation. And for that, I mean, for uh, th there are many. I wrote so I wrote my E in a software called LaTeX. It's L A T E X. It has it's actual researchers use use it to make their uh, theses and research papers. So for a physics or a any science or math based E, it's it's very helpful to use that because it instantly increases your presentation marks. But it's a bit hard to learn. It's a bit like programming, you know, some programming into it. But most LaTeX uh, E's are in LaTeX do extremely well. So that's a genuine practical tip. So uh, if you're in grade 11, try learning LaTeX and make your extended essay in that and enjoy the presentation marks. Is it a LaTeX? Is a free one or they have to pay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah LaTeX is free. It's a, it's, it's a essentially a program language. Oh, can you spell it again to our audience? L A T E X. Okay. It's it's latex but pronounced latex. Latex. Like, yeah. Fantastic. Even I never heard about uh, this one. Fantastic. Or yeah, is there is a, a website overly. Uh, you can okay. use it for free there. Yeah. Artist, this is a bunch. Okay. In five minutes talk, you will give fifty thousand uh, tips. Okay, how you uh, can excel in the duty. That's a one channel, <laughs> and that's the reason why you got forty five out of uh, forty five. So once I have last some couple of important questions related to general to your IB journey. Can you tell maintaining the motivation throughout the IB journey can be challenging? How you share some effective tips and tricks that help you stay motivated and focus during your IB journey? All right. So I mean, this is a very is, uh, honestly, it really depends on person to person. I'll give you my example, but it might not really help you personally. Uh, so I've always had like a big picture in my mind of what I want to do and why I want great grades. So that's always helped me motivated because I've, I've had the big picture. I know that I want to get, I want, uh, uh, I, I want to get into a good uni. Uh, and why do I want to get into a good uni? Because I'm very passionate about like space exploration and stuff, building rockets. And I want to make a difference. And to make a difference, I need to be the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. Uh, so yeah, that's why I worked hard. Also, my parents, I mean, they've put so much into me and I obviously want to, I want my parents to be happy that, that, that their son is doing well. So that also helped me stay motivated. And yeah, as look, as long as you have like a, like an aim coming into the IB, if you come in aimless, you're going to have trouble finding, uh, studying because like uh, the IB is a, there are ups and downs, but if you have a goal, if you have an aim, you, you you'll sail those rough seas. It'll be it'll be fine. Uh, so I mean, there there's really no. I really feel that there's no you know magic tip or trick uh, helps you stay motivated in during the IB. But yeah, as long as you have an aim and it, it helps to develop good study habits as well. Uh, if you do that early on, that'll help you later. But yeah, that's how you stay motivated. I guess. Exactly. Uh, listeners, please note here small tip. Uh, one chiada mother is physics teacher and I and Munch mother working in the same department. So that is a extra tidbit here. And you can see why he has taken the extended essay in physics and why you want to go for the aerospace. So this all linked from his parents. That is a big motivation what they say. Fantastic Munch. Yeah. Munch, can you tell, reflecting on your final exam paper, what specific strategy did you employ to achieve a perfect score 45? Whether any steady technique or time management approach that you found particularly helpful, you can charge for the, our audience. Uh, so for me, like obviously, when you come into the IB, uh, if you come in like with a lot of uh, motivation, you're going to look into a bunch of study techniques. You'll probably c c come across like the Pomodoro method and stuff like this. Uh, that really didn't help me at all. So, but what did help me was making a timetable during uh, exam uh, time. Uh, so like say one month before exams, trials, for example, uh, and the final exams, I just make a timetable. Uh, and uh, these timetables would be very, very, uh, so, I mean, I don't mean, these would be like 14 hour study days, very, very long hours. 14 so, hours. Yeah. Nice yeah. I, you probably won't, you probably won't believe me and that's fine, but that's, I did actually, uh, but to be fair, like plus or minus four hours, actually minus four hours, 10 to 10 to 14 hours. Uh, and that, why was that? Because I gave lots of importance to my HLs, physics, chemistry, and math. They're very dangerous HLs, uh, the big three. Uh, so for them, I'd easily dedicate four hours a day to 
each of them during exam time. So that that's already 12 hours and the rest I'd fit in like eco, English, French. French towards the end required a lot of effort because I got complacent with French and I started doing sub bar. So I had to put in a lot of effort towards the end. But yeah, timetables, waking up early too. At one point I was waking up at 4 a.m. to start studying. Then that, why was that? Because during the early hours, you don't get disturbed. I was still getting eight to nine hours of sleep. So it wasn't anything superhuman waking up at 4 a.m. I just changed my schedule to start waking up 4 a.m. But no one's awake. It's quiet. It helps you get a lot of work done. And I use that primarily for math. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I mainly use. I also made a lot of use of past papers for especially physics, chemistry, math. Those are very helpful. I went through years and years of past papers. Uh, and for like physics and chemistry, the textbook is your Bible. So I, I inhaled the textbook uh, during. So like uh, I, I, I knew like every page of the chemistry textbook at one point. Uh, yeah. So that is these are some tips and some techniques which helped me effectively retain knowledge and study get a lot of content into my head Amazing. for exams findable for the exam fantastic once can you tell how do you envision you are perfect ib score 45 benefiting you in your life beyond the school do you see any potential connection between the skills and knowledge gained through the ib to the program and your future goals uh, so a 45 i mean at the end of the day it's just a number now that might come very pretentious coming from me but seriously i mean functionally i've seen that once you're above once you're into the 40s and plus or 40 plus uh, you're already like a very motivated person and half the time it's honestly just random chance who, who above plus uh, above 40 and he, I, I, even like besides academics academic scores alone uh, what, like you like the uh, the best skills and benefits the ib gives you uh, those are i think that that's irrespective of your score these uh, like the ib uh, as much as students like to complain about the ib attributes and attitudes and the ib learner profile it's actually evident in every single ib student academically gifted or not uh, that's the true success of the ib you can i feel like you can identify an ib student just by starting a conversation they're um, well versed about any topic they, uh, they they get into they have excellent critical thinking skills they're they're lifelong learners are always going to learn no no one comes across as particularly pretentious uh, as uh, unforgiving we're always happy to have healthy arguments a healthy debate uh, and that that's what that's truly what i see in this uh, the success of the IB, uh, that, that learner profile. And we're, we're very principled. Honestly, most of us have great, great values and we're grounded, we're down to earth, uh, regardless of what your score is. So yeah. And again, again, for the 45 itself and your grade that uh, besides uni, uh, getting, getting into unis and perhaps for the first or second, first year of uni, people will still ask for your score. But besides, after that, I don't think your score really matters that much. So like, don't really beat yourself i don't really waddle or there's, there's no reason to think that much about your score uh yes. but yeah it's nice well said well said so once when reflecting on your academic journey what do you believe apart from others and contributed to your ability to achieve this score yeah wait so, so could you repeat that question I'm saying, quite, when yeah. reflecting on your academic journey two years when you're reflecting yeah. do you believe set you apart from others other students and contributed to your ability to achieve this perfect score in the IB exam. Right. So I think one, number one, my study habit, I had, uh, my study happens during exam time really like uh, it was like a it's a it's like a it's like a uh, super super ability or something like that. that that really helped me also I, ha I had an aim I had a reason to be studying uh, I had a reason to be putting in the long hours and uh, I don't know if this makes sense really I I'd, I'd gotten into the in that into my head that at one point that I, I had nothing to uh, lose and everything to gain by studying so that is, I just put everything in because like, why not I mean you have you're spending two years anyways might as well go full send with it uh, work as hard as you can and the it doesn't really if uh, yeah I, I, I don't know if that makes sense but yeah that's what I primarily think set me apart i just realized i had to work hard i had gotten that into my head and i stayed focused on my goals really i mean there's really no there's, really, there's like really no secret sauce that helps you get good at academic it's just, it's just work hard man Fantastic. just work hard seriously work hard okay listeners i hope you are listening once throughout your ibdp course what were some significant challenges you encountered and how did you overcome them to continue progress academically and personally right so let's see in this in the, in the start of my 
DP. Like I got involved with like, like I was more interested with like friends and, you know, like teenage stuff, you know, the pursuing that uh, picturesque high school experience that, yeah, I want, I want to talk to people and, you know, everything that that's read between the lines, everything that comes with it. Uh, and that uh, uh, in the beginning, it was great and everything, but my grade started suffering in the start of the just 11th, first, first semester, grade 11. And uh, that was a big, a bit, a bit of a wake up call that I hey, look in pursuing the picturesque high school experience is great and all but you need to get real at some point and uh, the, I, I managed uh, thankfully that came uh, at the end of uh, I think for me it was uh, it was the holy break of DP1 I studied a lot during the D, uh, holy break uh, before uh, uh, yeah. so that's around March and back in back then in DP1 no one really studied I mean it was DP1 it's holy break who's gonna study I did and I feel like that start that propelled uh, my journey into doing well academically because the study uh, that, that entire week I just spent studying and that's the first time I put into like a 10 12 hour study day and that study habit stayed with me for all of DP2 so th- 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 that that was that was the first challenge uh second procrastination is a huge 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 problem and honestly I haven't solved it I still procrastinate like crazy I procrastinated like crazy during DP2 as well but uh yeah again like a timetable really try to fix that because I didn't really leave because if you if you have a very lax day and you just wing it uh you you're gonna pro- you're gonna let procrastination get the better of you so th- that helped me with procrastination and um yeah i mean another another issue was uh i mean this is very personal but like toward uh, uh, in the middle like a few months before exams during more my dad got sick and that was uh was very emotionally draining uh but yeah i mean i i, I, I because of that aim i had that I, i'm studying for my parents i'm studying for myself i had so many reasons to study so that kept me studying and that didn't help me from wallowing and you know sad uh yeah, so that helped me push through that situation and my dad is now feeling much better and Brilliant. i did well in my exams Brilliant. so yeah once you are not only an ideal dp students you are ideal child for every parent well, your character is an ideal child for everyone fantastic once now tell me uh, as a student who achieved a seven in all the subject what are the two pieces of advice you can offer the dp students aiming for a top grade in their studies yeah pay attention in class make notes um, you, you'll be surprised like this is very gen- gen- generic advice but you'll be surprised at how many students fail to just do these basic two things hell i even uh, failed to do it to uh, most of dp1 that, that it came into it came it got into my head later on that oh my god i'm supposed to take every class seriously because there's a lot of content especially towards the end uh, so much content is being discussed and i've uh, been you, you need to stay on top of all of that and uh, other than that your grade is not just uh, it's not just a raw score you have ias you have different papers with different weightages and if you can identify your strengths like for me i knew that paper 1 in physics i never uh, paper 1 was always like a problem for me so i put in i put in a lot of effort into paper 3 and paper 2 and my i and even though i did okay in paper 1 physics being aware of the fact that i'm i'm, I'm weak at one of this assessment component and if i want to do well i need to make it up in all of these other components so i was very cognizant of that and that help me get a very high grade in uh, physics uh, and that applies to basically any other subject similarly for english paper 2 i'm not, i didn't take language and literature and paper 2 uh, i n- i n- i was never good at it and i well i, I did obviously try to improve at it but i knew there is somehow also going to be a weakness so i focused on the io i focused on paper 1 and that helped me get a great score so these are some basic tips once your final question which everyone want to that is important even for me dealing with a stress is a common challenge for many dp students especially in the great world how did you personally cope with stress especially considering the demand of the ibdp program and your personal experience it's a uh specific to from person to person uh but i had two main strategies one i let the stress fuel me like the stress and the angst and just everything I was, I was like come on it's just a few more months push through it man it'll be over it'll be all over and yeah it, it does eventually get over so again some people can do that some people can't so yeah also i use sleep to my advantage whenever i got stressed i honestly just slept brilliant brilliant uh, get a good night sleep in 10 11 12 hours even if you're feeling adventurous and uh, for me that help get keep the stress away cuz sleeping uh, it just it just fixes everything doesn't it yeah that's a fantastic bunch it's a brilliant conversation with you about your success on all your experience will be a lesson for many dp students who want to achieve the high grade bunch your final words thank you sir. yeah well no, thank you thank you for listening to me uh, 
DP students, our teachers, and yeah. Uh, again, like there is, I just want to say that there is no secret sauce to a forty-five. Just work hard. I just want to keep stressing that because I was not, I was not a special kid. I'm not particularly gifted academically. I just worked hard, and yeah. I, but uh, but but uh, I like the word just work hard. Just 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 is yeah. Honestly, <laughs> open your book, my man. my guy open the book and start studying really listeners thank you for listening to guru mantra podcast with your host guru charan kumar i hope you enjoy a deep dive into the all the tips tricks about the dp tok and exchanges if you enjoyed this episode then you can help and support the podcast please share with others post it on social media and leave the rating and review thank you so much until we meet for the next episode thank you bunch